Hello and happy Sunday. It is a very windy Sunday here in Sydney today. I nearly lost my visor a couple of times while running across the Iron Cove Bridge. Um, the wind gusts are just intense. And this week marks sort of a restart of my triathlon training properly. Um, I haven't done any swimming yet because Leichhardt Park Aquatic Centre, though it is open, it's only open for bookings and I haven't been able to book or have make time to make a booking to actually go for a swim. But I have finally gotten back on my bike. Uh, it has been way too long since I've done cycling. So it's about time that I got back on my bike. Uh, I've got it on my trainer, so I mount it inside. Uh, I haven't been cycling outside for quite a while, but at least cycling inside, I am getting that cycling fitness back. And one of the benefits of cycling as opposed to running all the time is that you can exercise at lower heart rates and can build up that lower heart rate fitness. Uh, and you got approximately five zones or four zones depending on who you're training under or what rules you're training under. And unfortunately for me, my calculated zones, I find it when I'm running impossible to get down to zone two. Uh, it calculates it according to your maximum heart rate. So my max heart rate is somewhere around 215, 220, something like that for running. Um, so therefore my zone two max would be around 150, at most 160, um, but it's preferable to be in the lower 150s, if not the 140s. Today, during my really long run, uh, 17 and a half kilometers, I was supposed to keep to E2, uh, which would have put me at about 150, but instead I tried to keep myself to about at, at most 157 or trying to be 155 beats per minute. One big reason I think that I'm failing to reach these zones is I'm unfit. I am a little bit overweight, uh, about 10 kilos overweight from where I want to be. My race weight, I believe I should be around 65, if not slightly below 65 kilograms. I'm currently at about 77, 78. So once I get rid of a few of those kilos, when I get closer to the 70 kilo mark, I reckon I'll be much more able to run at my calculated zone two. But the reason why I brought this up was because in cycling, because you're not supporting your body weight, I can actually cycle um, at a reasonable rate and still be within my zone two. So I am going to try and incorporate a fair bit of cycling so that I can get my body exercising within zone two as much as possible. I am also, of course, trying to lose that 10 to 15 kilos of weight. Uh, another way I'm doing that is by fasting. So I do intermittent fasting on pretty much a daily basis. And that means that you don't eat for at least maybe 12 plus hours per day. I try and push that as much as possible. The more you can push that, the better. Because after about 12 hours, you start, you've sort of depleted your carbohydrate stores and you start reaching into your fat stores and burning your fat a bit more. So the longer you can push that, the better. And also typically on average, when you're doing intermittent fasting, you do tend to eat less in general because maybe you're cutting out one or two meals a day. And you'll see different people mentioning different ways that you can do a fast. So some people may do a dry fast, I believe it's called, where you don't have anything at all, even water. Uh, that's not really recommended because you can't go without water for too long. Then there's the next level up of fasting, which is what I consider to be a proper sort of fast. And that's where you can have water and you can have maybe black coffee or tea, as long as it's not like a fruit tea. Um, so pretty much zero calorie drinks or very incredibly low calorie drinks, and that's it. And that's what all you have during your fasting period. Then there's a level above that, which I don't really consider a fast, but it's kind of, it's a semi-fast and it's a fast from food at least. And that's where you can have lower calorie things such as maybe bone broth. And then above that, there's another level which is sort of a fast mimicking thing, which is where you can have, it's basically just a low calorie diet, um, a really low calorie diet. And you can do that as well. So it's all up to you as to which way you want to go. I find for the best benefits of fasting, um, I only have the water and coffee. And also I find that if I'm not having any foods or anything like that, if I'm just having the water and coffee or tea, then they act as sort of an appetite suppressant. But as soon as I have anything else, I find that I get hungrier and it makes the fast harder. So the more that you have during your fast, 
the harder you're actually making it on yourself. When I've done the low calorie diets, I find that I find myself really hungry a lot of the time. Whereas when I do fasting, I find that I do get hungry every now and again, but if I have a glass of water or maybe a coffee, that hunger goes away and it's just so much easier. So when you're doing fasting, I definitely recommend to try it with water, coffee, black, no creamer, no milk or anything like that, no sugar, um, and maybe tea, something like that. Again, no milk, no sugar, and definitely not like uh, flavored tea or fruit-based tea or anything like that. And for the intermittent fasting, I recommend about 16 hours. Uh, a good start is to go 12 hours, then go 14, then go 16 as you start to get more and more used to it and then start pushing further and further. So 18, 20, 22, you can even go 24 hour fast, that sort of thing. Uh, you can also push to do a multi-day fast. That is a thing. So I have in the past done, I attempted a three day fast, but I managed to only get two days, but that's still quite a bit. Another thing I am trying to do is eat healthier, of course. That's the general rule that you should be eating healthy and just generally eating within your actual caloric limit. Um, yeah, and another way I did lose a little bit of weight yesterday. Of course, I've done this before and it's not a recommended way to lose weight. It's a good thing to do though, is I went and donated plasma. So here's me yesterday. Wow, it is so quiet in the city heading out to go donate plasma today. Doing my bit. And in going to donate plasma, you need to have food in the three hours before and water, lots of water, way too much water. And I follow those rules because uh, there was one time back several years ago, maybe nearly 10 years ago, I didn't have enough water and I didn't have enough food and I nearly passed out while donating blood. So I make sure I always have loads of water, but means I've got to go to the bathroom a lot. Where is the nearest bathroom? <laughs> and nearly at my favorite place, the Blood Donation Center, Australian Red Cross, here in Town Hall. It's one of my favorite places to donate to. If you get a chance to be able to donate, please try and do it. It's a very good thing, it helps out a lot of people. So I'm training for my Guinness World Record attempt again later this year, assuming that the Blackmores Marathon is going ahead. Uh, and to do that, I'm running in effectively what I'll be running with on the day. The more you can practice in that, the more that on the day, you'll just be used to it. So for me, that is a full covering. Arms completely covered, legs completely covered. I'm wearing actual Kung Fu pants um, and minimalist type running shoes so in this case the vibram five fingers uh, these ones they have lasted me a very long time i've had these vibrams for about two years now um, they last a very long time because of course when there's no padding to get old and squished then you don't need to replace your shoes nearly as often i only replace these when they actually start wearing on the sole which they still haven't actually started wearing on the sole i've been running fairly light in these and the lighter you can run the longer they will last but I do also run in my Kung Fu slippers. Uh, and so when I'm doing a long run, say on the weekend, uh, I'll run in my Vibram Five Fingers. But when I'm running to and from work, so I mentioned that last week where I run approximately 5K each way to and from work, I'll wear the Kung Fu slippers, partially because they don't look as conspicuous. Uh, when you're walking around in Kung Fu slippers, people think, oh, they're kind of normal shoes. But when you're running, walking around just in general in Vibram Five Fingers, people go, what the hell are those? Anyway, that about does it for me this week. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.